There are two variations that are commonly given in the pike stretch, and we're going to talk about both of them today and which one you should do when. They are bringing your forehead down to your knees, and the second one is bringing your chest down to your thighs. Now, they stretch out two different muscles. Bringing your forehead down to your knees is going to stretch out your lower back, whereas bringing your chest down to your thighs is going to stretch out your hamstrings. If you just want to touch your toes, for most people, they're more flexible in their back than in their hamstrings, so you should bring your forehead down to your knees and round your back as much as possible. But if you have tight hamstrings from chronic sitting and want to focus on stretching those, I'll show you the best way to do that. Let's get down on the ground and I'll show you what I mean. So the whole idea with stretching any muscle is to take one end point and the other end point and pull them as far apart from each other as possible. That's like stretching out a rubber band. That's what actually what causes stretching. Now, if both pieces move together in one way or another, that's not stretching out the rubber band. So we want to make sure that we are pulling those two ends apart from each other. So let's apply this rubber band concept to our pike stretch. There are three muscles that matter for our pike stretch. There's the gastrocnemius, the hamstrings, and the erector spinae, or the back. Again, we want to focus on stretching the muscles by pulling the two endpoints as far apart from each other as possible. Now, if we were to just focus on rounding the back, what's going to happen is that the back is going to get a lot of stress because the muscles run from the top of the neck down to the lower part of the spine, and as we round the head to the ground, we're going to be pulling that top of the spine away from the lower back. However, if we were to just hinge at the waist, folks, and bring our chest down, then our butt moves up with our neck and we don't feel as much stress there. However, the hamstrings are going to be taking the brunt of the stretch then because they run from the back of the knee to the top of that butt. And we, want, again, want to stretch them out as far as possible from each other. So if we're sticking our butt out, we are pulling our, our butt away from the bottom of our knee. And that's going to focus on stretching out these hamstrings. Now, a lot of people will say the way that you stretch out your hamstrings or to make the stretch more intense is to focus on straightening your legs out and lifting your heels off the ground. That's actually not going to help you stretch out your hamstrings. Instead, that's going to focus on your gastrocnemius, which is often confused for tight hamstrings because they both connect at the back of the knee. So if you were to lock our legs out and push our Achilles tendon, the base of our heel forward as much as possible, that's going to stretch out our gastrocnemius and we're going to feel that behind the leg. But if we want to focus on the hamstrings, the best way to do that is to instead point the toes to take the gastrocnemius out of it, to keep the back straight, take the back out of it, and instead just to hinge at the hips, bringing the chest down to the thighs. So the entire stretch is just focused on pushing the butt back as far as possible, keeping the stretch entirely within the hamstrings rather than any other part of the movement. So to quickly recap, if you want to stretch out your hamstrings, you're going to want to point your toes and keep your back straight, bringing your chest to the ground and sticking your butt out as far as possible. That's going to pull your butt back relative to the base of your knee, and that's going to mean that you're actually going to get flexible hamstrings rather than flexible gastrocnemius or a flexible back. This has been Water Some Fitness. I'm Jake, and as always, thanks for getting better.